It's showtime! It's CFM Radio. I've been playing a lot of F099. Yes. Thanks to the last Nintendo Direct, we got some good news for F0 fans. God, F0 fans getting a crumb of content after like two decades of nothing. Yeah. You know, high speed, low gravity racing. Now with 99 players. To be honest with you, I love it. It's really fun. It makes you feel like old school, like uh, F Zero X Death Race, like style. Um, I'll tell you what: if you if you play F Zero Ninety Nine and you've been in one of those Night Cup Grand Prix, talk about a test of skill and endurance. The ultimate F Zero experience. The, only the top twenty survive. I've been in the top twenty. I haven't made it out. I've always crashed. It's crazy. People are out for blood, Drix. That sounds awesome because that's something you could consider like a Nintendo hard game. <laughs> it and really is. Now we get, and now we get the battle royale of players duking it out. Yeah, that sounds awesome, and I'm excited to play it. I, it's, yeah, man. But if you haven't played uh, or checked out F Zero Ninety Nine, it's free right now on the Switch on eShop. We're going to talk about Starfield being Bethesda's biggest launch in history with over 10 million confirmed players. And that info comes from their official Twitter, Drix. Can you believe 10 million players? Yeah, that's a whole lot of hype, a whole lot of people having a great time in space. I mean, Skyrim still has a dedicated fan base after years. So do games yep. like you know Fallout, New Vegas... And it, it shows that their art form and their fan base is definitely, it's, it's paid off and they've, they've learned a lot and, you know, they're ready to present us with outer space exploration on a, on a large scale. And it works. I love it. I, I'm having a great time with Starfield. I, I think it's well-deserved 10 million players. Sweet. First big win for Xbox, right? Like, looks good to me. Yeah, they earned it. Definitely, definitely for this time, you know, and, and there's, uh, you know, you keep seeing all the hype around Starfield. People be like, oh man, can't, I'm not a very big mods guy. Like I like mods. I'll put on some mods here and there. Like I'm a new Vegas player, right? You got to have mods, but, um, (laughs) we, I'm not super, I don't always mod my games out, but everybody's already talking about the mod potential for Starfield. And you know what? I got to say, it definitely feels like a, uh, like you said, a spacey Skyrim, and Skyrim got modded to hell. So, <laughs> yeah, we we welcome it, and maybe even those those mods will be you know remasters on the next console generation. <laughs> yeah, like hey. Legendary Edition. Here we come. Hopefully, Who those knows? mods come to console. They keep saying these mods are coming to console. They got some mods on console with Fallout Four. Hopefully, we can get more mods on console. Yeah, they've done, you know, a multiplayer mod for Bomb Rush Cyberpunk, so yeah. who knows how long it'll take <laughs> before we get one for Starfield. Seriously, for just people being able to travel the stars by themselves, especially since, gotta say, one of the worst parts about Starfield is the companions, it, you know, they're they're just lackluster. And yeah. only in combat. They're, writ- they're written pretty well, and they're pretty good personalities. But in combat, wet needle. We're 
we're going to talk about some more new releases coming out this week. Uh, but with a couple of these new releases, there's some highly anticipated DLCs. Oh, yeah. We live in an age where you can just add whatever you want into a game. So, yes, a lot of gamers are actually anticipating DLC. And uh, once they finish with the meat and potatoes, they'd like a little bit of dessert with their video game. To be fair, a lot of the, a couple of these games, I think uh, when you when you tell people there's more stuff coming, people get excited. Uh, but we're gonna come out we're gonna come out swinging with the new release, the big new release this week, tomorrow, September 21st, Thursday. Payday three hits Game Pass and Steam. Payday 2, incredibly popular title, active player base to this day, logging in, grabbing the cash, gunning down cops, putting on those masks. Yep, heist simulator. <laughs> you know, if you're not playing uh, GTA 5, you're going to be playing Payday 2, and I guess tomorrow you're going to be playing Payday, fr- Payday 3. Yeah, what, 10, 12, 13 years? And there's still a player base, and these fans are yeah gotta be itching for a new dose of payday hey new new guns new masks new maps you gotta love it dances herself today right next door on the 21st is the DLC for the Resident Evil 4 remake, Separate Ways. This new storyline sees you experiencing the story of Ada Wong and Luis as they search for Leon and Ashley, with a familiar face watching from the shadows. This comes alongside a new update for the Mercenaries mode that comes completely free. You don't need to pay for any sort of DLC for this Mercenaries mode. So get ready to headshot some zombies once again if you got yourself some Resident Evil 4. If you, hey, listen, I love Resident Evil 4. The remake is great. Mercenaries mode, awesome. I, you know, I do not get tired of gunning down these zombies. Yeah, and that was, to me, like the original kind of wave shooter because uh, yeah. I had some good hours playing that mode on GameCube and eventually yes. on PS2 when that came out a little later. I wonder. I wonder how it already looks very different from the trailer. If you've seen the trailer, but uh, I wonder how how many more sto- how many story beats they're going to take from the original Ada Wong side story that came out on the PS2 version of the game. Yeah, exactly. An interesting comparison to be made, <laughs> right? Just like hey, just like all the other uh, Resident Evil remakes we've had. The, this remake series has had its ups and downs. Started on a very high note. Resident Evil 3. I like the Resident Evil 3 remake. Uh, people, it was contentious with most people, but I actually really like uh, the fact that Resident Evil 4 stays true to its source. Most to its source material makes clever changes where they where they feel like things kind of random, like the turret in the middle of the house just comes out. That change was nice. Um, you know, making uh, some some of the fights that were more cinematic and uh, quick time eventy, making them more interactive and actually you fight the boss. Those that's awesome. I love when game remakes do that. Uh, so Resident Evil Four remake, big win, and it still looks like it's winning. If you if you're getting you're getting a, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck with that Resident Evil Four remake. Hey, remember Capcom uh, thirty year interview, three year plan. Yeah. We'll do enough work to this game so that you'll still want to buy it three years later. And the finally, Tuesday, next Tuesday, the 26th, is the release of the Cyberpunk 2077 DLC expansion, Phantom Liberty. This content is getting crazy rave reviews. IGN gave it a nine out of 10. Hey, Drix, is this what Cyberpunk fans have been waiting for? Honestly, I like the original game. Yeah, I enjoyed the original game a lot. 
Uh, but I've I've heard good things about even if you don't get into Phantom Liberty, you'll you'll still notice a significant upgrade in yeah. the Cyberpunk 2077 experience. Yeah, the uh, CD Projekt Red has come out and said, "Hey, you know what? Start up a new save. Like, it's uh, you want to experience this from the top." And uh, I'll, I'll say it like this: I understand if you uh, if you think that the game was lacking in features in the very beginning. There was definitely, I definitely felt like the RPG elements were kind of like sparse. Yeah. You know, but but I loved the shooting. I loved the story. I loved the world. You know, and definitely, yeah, d definitely the finer points like the like the police system. Didn't like the police system. I agree with the people who had gripes with that. Um, didn't like didn't like the dumb enemy AI. Um, some of the but I really enjoyed the entire ride of Cyberpunk from start to finish. And if Phantom Liberty is coming out and it's bringing out uh, these RPG elements that people really wanted to begin with and you don't even need to pay for it it's part of the free part of the dlc because so because they say hey start up a whole new game i might just re-download it and play it again yeah. yeah that's one of the games i have around on disc as well so yeah i've been meaning to to revisit that and now if you've had that thought on your mind for a while it'll definitely be worth checking out I'll tell you what is a big deal, Drake. These Microsoft oh, yeah? uh, leaks from the uh, FTC versus Microsoft case. Holy guacamole, Drake. Yeah, some deep inside information on the inner workings of the gaming industry and just about how far ahead you have to plan when running a giant company like Microsoft and uh, making things that entertain us, such as video games. Yeah, uh, you know, just tons and tons of stuff. But I, I want to be clear here. Um, you could get... There's a... Floating around, you can get a... Um, you can see the uh, exhibit PX1517 from the Microsoft vs. FTC original document and the roadmap to 2030 for Microsoft. And... One look at this little PowerPoint presentation, Drix, you could tell things have completely changed. Yeah. Wow. A lot of a lot of thought and a lot of effort. You can really kind of see where their their little corporate thinking caps are when it comes to this PowerPoint presentation. It's just a document we can come across on the internet nowadays. And yeah, they they go through a lot of good details, like what the gaming landscape is like today, you know, from like playing on your browser to like playing on console or PC and even uh, the cloud area, which is really where they seem to have their focus. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, I, you look at these um, these mid generation, these theoretical, right? Mid generation refresh consoles where um, you've got you have all an all digital xbox series x the xbox series x refresh and um it's it, just the same thing with uh improved sustainability which is you know you're you got a little bit more storage a little bit better of a flow and you sacrifice the disk drive um well huh. it's the same it, it's also noted on here it's the same price 4.99 uh, whereas the Xbox Series S still still hovers around the two ninety nine price range, and um, one of the things that is important to note about the Series S, right? People people like to, including me, I'm guilty of it. People like to <laughs> talk down about the Series S. People like to say the Series S is kind of like a souped up Xbox Series X. Like, why would you have one? It's not. It doesn't offer the same uh, experience as the more powerful alternative. Turns out, 75% of Xbox Series owners own the $300 discless gaming console. 
Huh. You know, yeah. 75%. People just want to play the newest games, right? Yeah, especially if you've got a Game Pass subscription. Yep. It's, you don't even have to leave the house to get new stuff dropped to you all the time as it comes out. I mean, Starfield. <laughs> Definitely Starfield, but funny enough, not Baldur's Gate 3, am I right? Baldur's yeah. Gate 3, the, uh, quote, second-run Stadia PC RPG. Damn. They really thought gamers would just move on after playing it on Stadia or even hearing about it on Stadia. They might have overestimated their competitors or something, but... Or underestimated the, uh, the deep following that, like... Dungeons and Dragons and like entire role-playing game sagas. Yeah, the the Things Baldur's like Gate Wizards name. Of the Coast and Magic, you know, just all have their roots. Yeah. In this, in this sort of you know standard of imagination gaming. <laughs> yeah, not for nothing. Baldur's Gate three. We we talk about it a lot on this show. The Baldur's Gate three had a huge, uh, huge push from Wizards of the Coast. There was a Magic the Gathering set. That you know, there was a huge early access period. Uh, originally a Stadia exclusive, moved o moved all around, uh, pushed pushed onto PlayStation, pushed onto the Xbox uh, Series consoles. They which they say is going to be out by the end of the year. But it's kind of uh, crazy that one of the highest rated games of the year. It's still sitting there, right there on Metacritic, ninety six percent, the highest rated game of the year. Pretty much is is going to be remembered as a PC and PS5 exclusive for a while. Yeah, definitely. That's kind of gnarly. But hey, you know what? They lost the console war, right? That's why we're moving to the cloud. Yeah, full speed ahead. We're moving... Hole in that engine. We're moving to the cloud. Now, uh, again, I don't put too much stock in this... Um, in this uh, PowerPoint presentation, but I will say when you look at the Xbox Gaming Beyond slide, um, and they like the one that has like the uh, the the um, then and now uh, the browser mo top it, on the top it has browser, mobile, Android, iOS, smart TV, low and mid end PC, streaming sticks, cloud devices, handhelds, consoles, high end PC, and Cloud Blade. Um, and then on the bottom, it's got all the Xbox accessories for those things. Um, I don't know if uh, Xbox... I hear people on the internet talking about, uh, like, Xbox handheld, right? Oh, man, the leaks say Xbox handheld's coming. I don't think this is a really saying anything like an Xbox handheld is coming. I think that you have a lot of handheld PCs. You have the Asus, ROG, Strix, or whatever, the, 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 new, the new handheld PC from Asus. You have the, yeah. um, you got the, the Steam Deck, right? Yep. You got the Steam Deck. And according to these, uh, documents, they were already briefed on the new Switch at the, t at the end, tail end of last year. So, yeah. uh, you know, handheld, honestly, could just mean handheld devices. Like, they're trying to bring Xbox games to handheld devices. Yeah, all you would need to enjoy a Game Pass subscription is even like a tablet, a controller, yep. and an internet connection, you know? Yeah. A Chromebook or what, what have you. That's why I think when you look at the Xbox Gaming Beyond slide, I think that uh, you have one, there's, there's one of these things that has one hand controller, you can see right there, one hand controller and mobile controller. That I think is real. I, I actually think we have an Xbox mobile controller like that that turns it kind of into a Switch. But I think the one-hand controller, 100% is real. I definitely think whatever, uh, whatever, whatever initiative in gaming that accessibility has become has become something that is just simplicity of controls. And I think I can totally see that... Um, that specifically being pushed, a one-handed controller design, hey, you know what? 
Yuji Naka might have been onto something when he was trying to do Bala and Wonder World as a one-handed game, right? Designed as one-handed game with one button. So, like, if people want yeah, to do turn-based that... turn-based games, they're here to stay. You know, yeah. you could be playing, like, a, a JRPG somewhat, like, WrestleQuest, like, even on your Netflix yep. subscription now. With Play WrestleQuest on a Wrestle... <laughs> Wrestle sea of Stars is a turn-based RPG. You know, who knew Yoshi P could be so wrong when he said people didn't want turn-based RPGs? Like... Yeah, you can't listen to every comment in the comment section. Sometimes yeah. you gotta let your, let your haters you know, let you know you're doing something right. Do you think that the Elder Scrolls 6 is an Xbox Series X and S console exclusive? Or do you think since these documents say that 2028 is the next gen, right? 2028, next gen, everybody, mark your calendars, five years. Um, it's that, if that's the next gen, do you think Elder Scrolls VI is a launch title for the next Xbox? Yeah. That, that could be in the cards. I mean, same as maybe even GTA VI. <laughs> oh, no, I think GTA VI comes out next year. Oh? Yeah, but they'll, they'll port it or something. Oh, yeah, they're I'm, definitely... I'm D- GTA 5 is, like, what, 15 years old, bro? Like, that, people still be playing that game. Yeah, it'll make it. People but, love GTA 5. But, yeah, no, we're still... We just got our big Bethesda RPG, so yes. they're definitely going to let that simmer for a bit. Especially when you're talking about like these like Oblivion remakes and the uh, Fallout 3 remakes, you know what I mean? Like, yo guys, we just got Starfield. Definitely. We just got Starfield. Simmer down. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll contract out some, you know, hardware ports for you yeah. for all you retro fans out there who can't get enough. Yeah, seriously. Speaking of can't getting enough, I can't get enough of this sweet pixel music. <laughs> yeah, this is for the NES. This is the map area select theme from Bionic Commando. I love Bionic Commando, but before before we jump into right into it, Drix, any final words on Microsoft leaks? You know, there was a bit about them thinking about purchasing Nintendo, and uh, <laughs> I have I have my doubts. I'm usually you know call it being a pessimist or calling call it being you know someone who lives in reality and accepts facts but yeah i don't think that's gonna happen good luck on that maybe you should focus keep your eyes on your cloud gaming i guess microsoft and uh see who's willing to make the jump there yeah i agree uh i don't think uh i don't think microsoft's getting a um theme park anytime soon Uh, i don't see master chief the ride anytime soon like i see the mario kart ride you know i don't see yeah that. no i just hear about like bill gates the guy or something yeah yeah i hear about this dude phil spencer he wants to buy everything my guy yeah. is uh, my guy wants to throw money around like it's going out of style yeah he sure does so i don't know we'll see eventually cfm radio will be here telling the tale of whether or not <laughs> the game developers are into that and yeah, things like the uh, the Unity price increase. There's been some backlash about that, but we'll see where that goes and uh, deliver the headlines over some video game music. CFM Radio, we are back. Back with the track from Katamari Damacy. 
called Wanda Wanda. You know, I gotta say, Drix. Katamari has a good soundtrack, but I've never been a fan of the game. It's the camera angle. <laughs> and, uh, oh, God. maybe even the control scheme. <laughs> but yeah, you don't really get... For, for a game that requires you to travel across the maps great distances to roll things up yeah you can't really see where you're going very well yeah it starts off pretty fine but then like by the end of it i can't see where the fuck i'm going so i don't i, I can't get into it. it kills it for me yeah i kind of got the knack of it and i enjoy it but the wacky soundtrack sure does set the atmosphere <laughs> and you know what it's second to none right everybody loves it even to this day yeah, Katamari's hard iconic. to replicate. You can't really just... Not anybody can just come up with a Katamari game and make it feel the way Katamari does. You know, a lot of people would say the same thing about um, Mortal Kombat. And... Uh, yeah. it's You can't just throw blood and fatalities into a game and call it Mortal Kombat. God knows the people tried in the 90s. Do you remember how many goddamn Mortal Kombat clones there were? Drix. There were yeah. so many. Yep. I mean, didn't make the same kind of headlines. You know, no, as, not at all. As far as, you know, violence in video games goes. But nah, yeah, War Gods was not followed. making those headlines. Nope. Neither was Primal Rage. <laughs> no. That's one of my favorites with the dinosaurs. I love Primal Rage, but you know... You know what game, what Mortal Kombat game is making headlines? Mortal Kombat 1. But not the one that's getting generally favorable reviews and, you know, has an 86% on Metacritic. No, 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 no. We're talking about the one that IGN gave a 3 out of 10, the Switch port of Mortal Kombat 1. Drix. This port. Yeah. The Nintendo Switch is starting to show signs of aging. And here we go. In the generation of consoles that we are currently in, you know, something that might have been designed in its purest beauty standards for, you know, PlayStation 5 and PC, yeah, isn't going to look as, as attractive on the Nintendo Switch on the go. I guess, or load efficiently, or play well. These complaints are a little mind-boggling for a game that like that has the name has a name like Mortal Kombat, right? Like yeah. just it, it, the, like they say that Their summary, right, the summary right here is, quote, Mortal Kombat 1 proves to be too much for the Switch's dated hardware. The load times are egregious, there are numerous bugs plaguing both graphics and gameplay, making for a poor quality port of a great game that's all around aggravating to play. Yeah, I mean, especially with fighting games, things like frame data or what it comes down to in having reaction time gameplay. Yeah, you need you know, those controllers and those inputs to know exactly what's going on and uh, having, you know, a chugging engine struggling with loading times is, is yeah. not the business. <laughs> Yeah, 
You really want to be as precise as you can, even if the graphics are really, really low. But I guess the yeah. graphics are still really, really low, and <laughs> they they get these egregious load times and these bugs. You know, that's it's just a shame. It's a shame. You know, you could you release you release a port of a game for the most popular console because Switch is still the most popular console, and it just. It's nowhere near what you like. Like IGN says, it's nowhere near what you would get. And I'm sure there may be a little bit of, uh, it might be a little uh, exaggerated, right? In some respects. But I, I have to, I have to say, take just just taking a look at everything just makes it seem like yeah, there's game looks like it's got some problems. It, like I say, it's a shame for a game that's getting, you know, it's the the PlayStation 5 version and the Xbox Series version and the PC. Yeah, the PC version even has, they're all generally favorable reviews. 86 the, the, overall for PlayStation 5. There's a lot of 100s here from like Dexerto. Uh, you got GG, uh, GG Recon Games Radar, you know, like. There's a good yeah. amount of fanfare here for this game, and you know it makes me sad that, especially if you're a Switch owner who was looking forward to this, that you're just gonna get screwed. Like, yeah, if you hold those uh, graphics high in your in your rating scale, you, you'll be pretty disappointed. Yeah, it does not look does not look like a good one. This com combined with the negative reception that. The voice acting from uh, actors like Megan Fox is getting, you know, just doesn't, doesn't, it's not painting a great picture of Mortal Kombat 1, but hey, when push, co when push comes to shove, the way I see it is when if for a fighting game, it's all about the gameplay, and I hear nothing but yep. good things about the Mortal Kombat gameplay. Yeah, I mean, if, if you have learned even one Mortal Kombat character's moves, uh, yeah, you'll you'll still be interested in this. Just you might reconsider if you were thinking about purchasing it for the Switch. Yeah, <laughs> just uh, might not want to. My Switch. If you're a Switch owner, it's the only thing you got. Maybe wait, or maybe uh, grab in. Maybe invest in an Xbox Series S. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's the same amount, and you would be joining 75% of Xbox Series owners. 